Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Guess who we have back today? The man himself, Frank Cambuza. And I cannot wait for you to see Frank. Yes, if you're listening and you want to actually see the faces behind the names, you can watch today's podcast on video. You just need to go to Beyond the Technique's YouTube page. By the way, while you're there, subscribe and you'll be notified anytime a new video podcast launches and any new education class drops. So today we're introducing the new Gambuza Barbershop franchise, which is why Frank is here. And I'm super excited because it means that no matter what season we're in, there's always opportunity available to us. So before I bring my, uh, Frank to the mic, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Meet Your Stylist. Meet Your Stylist is a fun, easy, accurate matchmaking survey that lives on your salon website. So when you have all this peop- traffic and people coming to visit your website, how are you engaging with them? How are you actually capturing all their info so that you can continue to market to them? But better yet, how are you actually getting them to connect with stylists on your team right now in the moment? And then they're able to book right then and there. Well, that's Meet Your Stylist. There's nothing like Meet Your Stylist. In less than five minutes, future guests who take your survey are going to be matched with the top three stylists at your salon, and they're going to be available to book with them right on the spot through Meet Your Stylist. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. Future guests can even put in their photos of what they look like now and what their inspiration photo is for later. This helps you expedite the consultation process and also... You're converting clients. Our average Meet Your Stylist Salon converts 35 to 55% of survey takers. That's huge. There's nothing like that. Go to meetyourstylist.com to get your salon signed up today. Well, as I mentioned, Frank is back. Frank is back. He's been with us before and his journey and story is incredible. I can't release the secret, but just trust me, listen to our episodes every single week and you might just hear Frank's episode again in our all-time fave eight series that's coming up. But let me remind you, Frank Gambuza is the owner of the Visage Group in Knoxville, Tennessee. And he's also the former president of Intercafure America Canada, but now he's the world vice president for Intercafure. He's up to so many things. He's been in the industry for over 40 years. He began at the age of 13. I'm telling you, he's an inspiration to us and he just does not quit. He saw an opportunity. He partnered with Gordon Logan, who's the founder of Sports Clips and co-founded Gambuza Barbershop. So we're going to learn about his new franchise today. Without further ado, help me welcome to the mic, Frank Gambuza. Welcome back. Thank you, Katie. It's certainly an honor to be back. And I uh, congratulations on what you've done since we've spoken last. Thank you, Frank. Well, gosh, okay. You launched in 2019. We certainly didn't anticipate 2020 to be like this. But before we even got, dive into this year, and I know you already have barbershops opening up throughout the U.S. This is awesome. Let's go back to when you first thought of this vision. Here you are. You're a salon owner. You're really involved in Intercapure. What gave you the itch? Like, hey, there needs to be a Gambuza barbershop. Tell us about your vision. Well, Katie, you know, it's kind of 360 because I started off as a barber. So when you're looking at 2019 or you're looking at being president of a coiffure, it was ladies hairdressing. It was women's salons for the most part, although they were unisex, you know, late seven, early seventies, really, it started shifting and becoming a unisex environment. But my preliminary work prior to that was a men's barbershop. So once that craft kind of dissipated, I just assumed that that craft is over. I got to stay on top of things and go where it's going. And then in 2010, we opened the barbershop based on the fact that it was already making a comeback. You know, it's like a pair of bell bottoms. You know, I wore them the first time around and I wore them a second time around again. That's when, you know, you're getting old, right? But at least you're smart <laughs> enough to know that it's, it might not be the same exact, even, even though it's coming back, it's being done differently. And that's what we did at Gambuza's barbershop is we, we shifted and, and made it current. Mm, so tell us about it. Tell us what does it look like? How, have you taken something old and made it made it new again? Well, I, I think, you know, when you look at the old barbershop, the, the first thing that I think we always honored was the craft because it's it's not, it's a bit, barbering is quite, quite hard. 
I mean, to do really clean, good quality men's haircuts, it's not a short learning curve. You, you have to do a lot of them and you have to be trained properly. But it was more about a transaction of a haircut. You know, then it faded away. And that's probably why it faded away. I mean, long hair came in play. Mm. Hippie started getting a haircut from long to shorter, but it was more layered and it wasn't barbershop haircuts. So they still stayed away. But then all of a sudden resurgence, you know, 30 years later, men, men started, you know, getting shorter haircuts again. And the barber kind of had that talent. So I had it in my back pocket and I kind of brought dusted it off and brought it to the forefront, but realized that it couldn't be just a transactional barbershop because it would be do, just doing what was already been done. You had to do something different. So we had to take it from what was just a transactional haircut and create it into something experiential. And fortunately with Starbucks prior to that, you know, making coffee and experience, uh, Apple computer, making a visit to the store, very interactive and experiential. It kind of set the tone for today's day and age of what the consumer wanted to participate with your brand. So we did the same thing with Gambusa's Barbershop. We said it won't be just a haircut. It'll be a barbershop, but better. And the better part was the interactivity. We got pool tables, we got dartboards. And since then, this is in 2010, a lot of places are coming out doing that, kind of just copying it. And I don't want to say we were the original, but we were there before it was mainstream. And it, the bottom line is you better give a really, really good men's haircut. I don't care what kind of toys and games you have around it. They need to be over and above what the client's there for. And that's what they paid for. And the next morning when they're home, come with their hair in the mirror, the pool tables are gone. Your blow dry or style or your gel is out of the hair. And it better be about a good, solid haircut. And that's what we do at Gambus. It's about technical haircuts first and phenomenal experience second. When you marriage the two together, then you got something that's more experiential for the consumer. It's so powerful. And I love that you brought up some of, you know, here's what it looks like inside. So from a guest perspective, if I'm coming in for a barber haircut, what does that experience look like from start to finish? And how long well, does it take some of the, those logistics and what do you charge? Yeah, that's great questions because it is, it is quite different. And the first thing it does before what it looks like, it's what it smells like. What, you know, most guys have an experience, whether it was with their father or their grandfather back in the day when they went to the barbershop. And as soon as you open the door, it smelt like a man. It smelt like a barbershop. It smelt like aftershave. And one of the keys to that that was taught to me by an older Italian barber is that's why they have wood in barbershops. So they can withstand, they, they, they absorb the oils. And that's why the smell lingers on. So when you do these hip new barbershops and even back in the white tile barbershops, they had wooden tops to the counters. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was intended to do that because that's pretty good vision, but they knew that's what kept that smell and fragrance in there. So as soon as you open the, our barbershops, the first thing it does, it, it, you smile because you get this, you get this smell, which is associated with an experience. And typically the experience was with either dad or grandpa back in the day. And you know, you go and you know what you're getting ready to get into. So we do have a lot of wood for that purpose. So when you come in, you get the fragrance, but what's different today versus back then, we got somebody very polite, very articulate waiting to greet you. It wasn't mm. just coming in and like, you know, waving to the barber and the barber waving back to you and saying, have a seat, you know, and whatever barber was ready for the next person is who they got. So again, it was very transactional and the experiential part of saying, hey, in, indirectly that we've been expecting you. You're important to us. You're a consumer. We don't take you for granted. We know you have other choices. And it's all that consumer psychology and behavior that's necessary for us to, to partake in in order for someone to not just choose our brand once, but to stay very loyal to our brand. Mm -hmm. Well, and you talk about technique being first. That is a struggle when it comes to a franchise typically, right? Because how do you control quality when you have a franchise? So talk to me a bit about what does training look like and how do you ensure that the technical is going to match the experiential part of it? Well, it seems that it would almost be somewhat easier because you're, quote, only going to teach men's haircutting. It's not highlights. It's not balayage. It's not perms. It's not any of that. But the detailing in men's haircuts are so minute that it takes a while to get a barber from good to really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we, we, we start off right from scratch with them. I mean, we, we teach scissor over comb 
we use clippers for the sense of time because we book on either 45 or 30 minutes. Once somebody's up and running, they get a 30 minute slot okay. because a, men, a men's haircut is less expensive. And in order for, you know, what we do, people think we do hair for a living, which we do. But at the end of the day, we really sell time slots from the business side of, of the craft. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you only have so many time slots in a day at so much per slot. And that's what's going to be based on your salary when you back out the numericals. That, that's how you're going to get paid. So we, we really train it to where you got to get to be a $30 haircut, uh, not a 30 minute haircut. And we charge up to $39 for, for 30 minutes right now. Uh, Gosh, they, there's so much potential. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And the thing is, if you book solid through that time, which men are quite loyal, I mean, it's a very loyal clientele. Our oldest son, Jared, he, he's, he's our busiest and best barber in our company. And, and he, you can't get an appointment with him for weeks and weeks. And the thing is, I know I can get more money for him per se, but then you start wondering, are there going to be time slots open? And all you're doing is diluting down the dollar anyway, or diluting down the minute. So sure. what we want to do is, is stay book solid. It keeps the energy throughout the day. Energy creates energy. So we want to make sure that we're constantly working and making sure you're busy because downtime is detrimental. You know, they start sitting in a broke room and start telling stories and then it becomes an issue, right? So we train really hard from the beginning and we detail, detail, detail. Because anybody can kind of do a basic men's haircut. But to do one, we, we want it to be where if somebody sees a men's haircut in Knoxville, Tennessee, they say, I bet you you got that at Gambooses. Mm, we, cool. we, call, we call it the Gambooser guy. We, <laughs> want to be, we, want, we want the Gambooser guy to be able to get picked out in the crowd that he's a Gambusa client. Ah, oh, that's really cool. Okay, so for being a franchise, did you have to come up with, okay, this is going to be the size of our locations, how many barber chairs, what are some of those elements for owners listening who say, you know what, kind of interested in this franchise model. Tell us a bit about the model. Well, the, the model right now is being formed to go on a large scale. Fortunately, my partner's done this over 20 Two thousand times already. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, he, he was the founder of Sport Clips, and our other partner Edward. When I say our, I mean my wife Belinda and I are partnered with Edward and Gordon Logan, and Edward is now the president and of uh, Sport Clips. But yet it was Gordon who I did the deal with, and the fact that he did it two thousand times, I didn't have a desire to franchise. I knew it was franchisable, but I also knew what I didn't know. And that was, how do, you, how do you take it to market? How do you scale it? How, uh, you know, you, what it would take to figure that out, there's not enough years left in my career because you're going to make a lot of mistakes on the front end. It's going to cost you a lot of money on the front end to make those mistakes. And then you got to get through the middle so you can eventually rebound and recoup some of that. that it's not my wheelhouse. So I, my wife and I, Belinda, constantly joke around a little bit, but we're not really joking around. We say we feel like we won Shark Tank by getting Gordon and Edward as our partners. We didn't even have to go on the show. <laughs> That's so good. I mean, but how smart. It's smart to know your strengths and somebody else's and bring it together. So for you to see that is pretty cool. Okay, so now you are in more than one location. Tell us where you're at throughout the U.S. Okay, well, we got the two locations in Knoxville and the third was, we were starting to scout properties and then COVID hit. So obviously we got enough to pay attention to at the moment. So this is what's awesome about having partners who have been there and partners that have deeper pockets than we do. We're way more entrepreneurial. You know, I, I just wasn't on a national scale. So I knew having them as a partner would know how to do it. But more importantly, what they did is they were solid as rocks through the pandemic to where somebody small and and entrepreneurial like myself, that idea probably would have had to go away, Mm. at least for a long time. Mm -hmm. And these guys just kept drudging through it. They've been through it in 08 and 09 as well Mm. with the national franchise. So they got through it and they came out smelling like roses and they're doing the same darn thing again. I mean, I constantly get blown away with the intelligence that's in the room when father and son are talking and just kind of strategically planning what it takes to not only be where it's at, obviously you got to pay attention to where things are at, but they're constantly focused on where things are going. And I mm-hmm. think that's the protection of where things are at because you're a step ahead. So we, they have three now in Texas, mm-hmm. the fourth getting ready to open. So we have two in North Texas, 
Round Rock and Cedar Park. And we have one in South Austin. And we're getting ready to put another one in Austin proper, which will be the fourth one there. The two we have here, hopefully we get that third one up and running over the next year. And then we'll be in two different markets in the country that we can go to market with at that point. So we're probably a half a year away from being able to go to market. And we have numerous. I mean, it's almost like trying to slow the train down. The momentum's incredible on the people that want to take on a franchise. And, you know, I'm excited and I'm saying, let's do it. And my partner who's done it says, whoa, hold on, cowboy. <laughs> we, yeah. got, we, got to, we got to do this thing right. So you can do it. And do it right, and and that's that's what's a, a blessing to have them as partners. Do listeners today need an FFA to find out more about what does this investment look like for somebody who really wants to take on your brand and be a part of what you're doing? Well, we're, we're not actually there yet, Katie. Um, so you know, I think the time is going to be once we once we are totally ready. We'll do all the work on the back end. So when we hit, we go fast yep. as opposed to trying to leak it out. Grad. If we started when there was interest shown, we, we would have started before we even got open one in Texas. And now we're <laughs> opening number four. So I, I really appreciate that kind of discipline mm -hmm. that our partners have with doing this because they, they've, they've been through it. Yep. So I'm not going to, I mean, I, I know what my strength is. You know, we say it all the time is we won't tell you what to do with the franchise if you don't tell us what to do with the neckline. Because we, we know how to do hair and they know how to do franchises. So, so uh, the time yeah. is going to come where that hits. And it'll certainly, will be very choosy on not to move fast. And we'll be extremely choosy on who we partner with. Because th this has legs. And yeah. I don't want to say, I don't want to say it's bulletproof because there's no guarantees. Sure. But this has a high odds of success uh, once we go into play. It's so incredibly exciting. I'm curious. Can you share a little bit about what you have as, as a vision for, hey, the perfect person to step in and run a Gambuza barbershop looks like this, run things well, like this. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. The, fir the first thing is we wouldn't want somebody, I don't think, uh, and this is pretty much where we're currently at. So if this changes, it's only because I'm speaking with transparency of where we're at at the moment. It has to be somebody that wants more than just one because it, it, we don't want it to be a sidekick to somebody. Mm -hmm. We want it to be somebody that wants to be as passionate as we are about it and is willing to be present. You know, a lot of times people want to get to franchises to be owner absent. And you know as well as I do, the, the, the beauty business, the barbershop business, even more so actually, is a different bird. It's not the average just plug and play. So right. number one, we want somebody who's very passionate. Number two, we want somebody that's willing to to get their their hands dirty in the trenches because we'll have the systems that if they're willing to follow them day by day, they'll be quite excited about the decision they made to partner in with us. Mm. So I don't, I don't know if there's one perfect person, but if you're full of passion and you're willing to get your, your hands dirty and, and willing to have courageous conversations, that's, a, that's another thing we don't really talk about enough in this industry. But I really think most barber stylists and most hairdressers really want to do the right thing most of the time. They just don't always know what it is. So because of the way we teach and instruct and, and, and put our craft together, both from a business side and a craftsman side, is that we pretty much have the why behind what we're asking you to do. And I think when people understand the why behind it on anything, you know, no matter what you're putting in play, right now we're putting in a, a new tipping system called Tippy. Mm -hmm. into, the, into the salon and barbershops in Knoxville. And I know you're familiar with them, but the thing is once this, the staff hated it the second they heard the idea, but then when they heard the why behind it, oh, okay, now it makes sense. And I think we just don't spend enough, enough time educating people the why behind something mm -hmm. so it can be accepted and you can onboard with that and be able to work as a unit and a team all moving in the same direction. Yeah, it sounds like there's equal parts of let's hone in on your technical capabilities. And then, of course, the name of the podcast, right? You're beyond the technique. We got to go beyond the technical aspects of this job and really help you become great leaders and communicators. So I love Here is. Uh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, we're, we're pretty active in here today. Thank you. Uh, 
No, so the, yeah, the technique part obviously is something that that's what the client's paying for, but that's not what's creating the experience. You know, so it, it, it beyond the technique that I've heard that before, uh, but it really is that. And but I I think we got to be cautious that we don't just focus on the fact that we think it's all about the experience only and not the te technique either. So yeah. if you if you said how do you weigh those two out, you know I don't think it's a 50-50 split because at the end of the day people remember much more how they felt than how they looked. So it's probably a 60-40 swing, at least 51-49. But You're we so can't, cute. yeah, yeah, we can't forget the craft. We can't forget the craft part of it because you know yeah. just just because it looks right doesn't mean. And I've seen it happen a million times where people, you know, over the last ten years now, people have been coming into Knoxville, friends of ours and all, and then they'll go knock it off. But that without the why behind what we're doing, they make it look just like it, but it don't act like it. And then in turn, it doesn't behave like it, which means it won't succeed like it. Speaking of succeeding, do you feel like you have to have a certain size marketplace for Gambuza barbershops to be successful? Or do you think this can be something that could be in any American hometown? I think any American hometown is what makes it so appealing because you got to realize something. It was born and bred in Knoxville, Tennessee, a city of a half a million people. And we were forced into a second location. We call it forced growth. I, we really weren't looking to open a second one, you know? So we were forced into it. And this is not a major city. So I think it's built for major cities, but I think it's really, really founded in small town America. And, and that's why I think it's reproducible anywhere. Yeah. And I think the size of scale might matter, whether it's a six chair, eight chair or 10 chair might have somewhat to do with its location. Mm -hmm. But I think the product and the experience is for any guy that's age one to a hundred. That's so cool. Well, okay. Clearly the right person to take on your franchise is somebody who's as passionate about barbering in this industry as you are, because that's very clear. And that comes across in our conversation. What do you believe, like, what's your hope long-term for Gambuza barbershops? I just hope that everyone we open opens with the idea to be as excellent as the ones that are open. Because we didn't even plan on growing our salon company the size it is we didn't plan on even growing the barbershop the size it is but we did open with the idea of let's make it as excellent as possible and when excellence is kind of the focus i think size follows you know dollar follow you know just like money i think when you open it for money is the purpose it never it never materializes but i think if you open it to say we're going to be excellent at what we do money then becomes the reward for performing excellence. So I don't even think it has to be a barber stylist that we partner with at all. I think it just has to be a person who's willing to follow the procedures and policies that are put in place because we have, you know, a lot of times people talk about systems with an S in mm. the beauty business. Yep. And some, sometimes that's adjunct because they're taking chunks of systems from different methodologies and trying to put it together. And really, at the end of the day, what it boils down to is you got to have one, a system that has components that are all doing the right things for the right reasons so they can work in unison. So we have a game plan. There's more than one way of doing it. But, you know, when you're doing it with the right methodology that's proven successful, let's just do it better. You know, Vince Lombardi was quoted many years ago. They asked him what was his secret to winning the Super Bowl that was coming up that week. What kind of tricks does he have in play or you know what what kind of surprises is the other team going to see and he said the only thing we're going to do is block better tackle better throw better and catch better keeping it very basic but doing them extremely well at a high level of excellence and then that way you're going to get the good results that you're looking for you're speaking my language you know i'm in madison wisconsin here green bay is not too far away there you go okay i'm a big so fan so, so when I said Vince Lombardi, I saw this big smile come on your face. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, she must be related to him because I didn't know if you'd know him as a football coach. <laughs> you can't live in Wisconsin without knowing that name. That's cool. And, you, and what most people know about the Green Bay Packers, it's the only team in the NFL that's owned by the people. Yes, it's it's we are eat, breathe and sleeping our Green Bay Packer football here. It's pretty fun. Yeah. And we drink a lot of beer and eat a lot of cheese. 
I know you cheeseheads don't stop. <laughs> oh man, this is so fun, Frank. Really, I mean, as we're nearing the end of our conversation, what would you want people to know listening? Of course, we have in our show notes the link to Gambuza Barbershop so that they can go to your website. We've shared your Instagram with people so they can now go follow you and keep an eye on what you're up to. But what would what would that kind of final message be for everybody listening today, just to encourage them? not only to get through what we're going through right now, but that there is room for opportunity, even in the midst of a pandemic. There is, and I, and I think, you, you know, you kind of look back to what's most regular. You know, the, the, when things are rolling and, and everything's jubilee, I think you can kind of stretch things out to take a stab at stuff. But I think when we're looking at kind of the temperament of the economy now, that people are spending really well, but I think people are also looking at solidifying what, what's comfort. And I think what we have at Gambusa's Barbershop is kind of either that restaurant or, uh, you know, the, the feeling of when you walk in, people know who you are. They know in advance that it's going to be quality. And I think that's what we really want to portray is that, you know, you're going to be satisfied with that haircut before you walk in, not waiting until you leave. Yep. Because a good, a good restaurant does that. I mean, if you were coming to my town today, and I was taking you out to dinner tonight, I'm going to be sure I take you to a place that I know before we walk in that they deliver every time, time in and time out. And I never know who the chef is. It could mm. be a different chef on a different shift, right? So that's what we want at Gambuzis. We want you to be able to pick any barber that's available, be able to get the consistency of experience, and every bit as importantly, the craftsmanship of the haircut. Inspirational. Everybody listening, you ready to get on board? Well, you got to at least go check Gambuza Barbershops out. I have all the links in our show notes. You have to go take a look at it. Frank, you are the man and your journey in this industry has been incredible. And every time we speak, it, I always walk away just feeling reignited for why we chose this industry. Thank you so much. For My pleasure, here. Katie. Thanks for having me. And at the same time, I think what you're doing so people can hear different people's messages from their experiences just elevate the industry so everything you're doing is awesome and i'm not surprised that you're getting ready to do episode number 400 congratulations thank you frank and don't think you're going anywhere because i need to talk to gordon and edward about meet your barber oh we'll yeah, talk about <laughs> yeah. Before, everybody leave, before you go listen out monday 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 november 16th if you do any bridal hair and makeup at your salon you want to get in on our class beyond the technique is hosting how to have a booming bridal business. The investment is 87 per salon team. And you are going to learn how to create all inclusive bridal packages. How can you actually be on site in a safe and profitable way? And how do you set up processes and systems that markets to the right brides that you want to work with you? How can you be double the price of your competitors and still have a tremendous amount of demand? How do you create those systems of communication from start to finish and even after the wedding takes place so that you generate a ton of reviews, a ton of positive photography? I'm telling you from start to finish, you are learning from the best. Be Inspired Salon is named Wisconsin's best for bridal hair and makeup year after year. It didn't come easy, but you're going to learn from the last 10 years how we got to this point and how you can too. When you sign up, you're going to get lifetime access to the video class and all of the resources that we include and show you in the class. You want to be a part of this. Again, that's Monday, November 16th. You can get signed up by clicking on the link in our show notes. Thank you all for being here. Have an awesome day and stay strong.